Um, so I wore this shirt today. Uh, it says Pipeline Politics, and it says New Hair, Same BS on it. And it's a little outline of Justin Trudeau's hair. And I made this shirt with a bunch of comrades about two years ago before I headed to um, the UN Convention on Climate Change um, that was held in Marrakesh in Morocco in 2016. It's part of the Canadian Youth Delegation, which was, sounds like it's been um, promoted by the government, but it's like very not. The government, we didn't have many government passes to get into the negotiation rooms and things, so um, a lot of the, the tickets or the little cards we were funded to get there were from other groups that thought it's a good idea to have youth activists from across Canada to be there. We were pretty like big, like pretty mixed group. Um, <clears throat> And some of the things that I think we got right in Morocco um, were uh, having people of color on the team, which is like not incredibly reflective a lot of times of what environmental movements look like, um, because that, that rooted everything we did, at least the half of the team that was really concerned about climate justice, um, in the people who are most affected by it, which are overwhelmingly uh, indigenous and, and racialized communities, immigrants and migrants and so on. Um, <clears throat> we made a lot of support together with a lot of different on the ground grassroots movements and we found a, I found a lot of um, power and solidarity that was created together on the bottom um, and bottom up and we really interrupted a lot of the things that we did um, that were going on and the business as usual and politicians as usual. Um, the mainstream movement, mainstream environmental movement seems to sort of lack this ability to take the lead from the most affected. Um, and that is in sort of all levels of politics and everywhere in a lot of different social movements. Um, this is a new hair and it's the same BS. And that's, that's true for every single government that has ever come through, um, is that it's a new hair, or it's a new look, or it's a new um, whatever. And then you still have and you have your, your fancy words and you still get the same effects coming through. Um, we, you know, we thought maybe the NDP will be something and it's like, okay, it's not Christy Clark, but then you're setting a low bar. Um, when I was in Morocco, we had, uh, it was during the Trump election and uh, th th so everyone was like, well, I mean, at least Trudeau's not Trump. And I was like, that's, that's a very low bar to set. That's not great. Um, but the politicians aren't gonna change it. The government's not gonna change it. The government's not gonna be the one that, that leads the radical movement. They're not gonna be the ones who um, support the um, proletariat uprising or whatever. Um, they're not gonna be the ones who embrace decolonizing. They don't know how to do that. That the decolonizing automatically undermines the entire function of the Canadian state. It challenges all of that power. It calls everything into question. Um, so they're not going to get behind it. They're going to say, "Yeah, we support UNDRIP," and then they'll approve Site C. Or they'll say, "Yeah, we support UNDRIP," and then let a lot of poor people die all the time because they don't want to raise welfare rates and they don't want to build temporary modular housing in the numbers that it needs to be and they don't want to build permanent social housing um, they don't want rent control um, they don't want to end the stupid rules of welfare or they don't want to tax the rich like all of these things they're all connected um, anyway so um, it's a pipeline all of it is pipeline politics um, all of the politicians are, are pipeline politicians even sort of when they say they don't because um, Regardless, you know, we have like the city, I guess, okay, city now. Um, so you're thinking of the city. The mayor of Vancouver is against um, this, the Kinder Morgan, right? And so is um, Derek Corrigan and the city of Burnaby. Doesn't like it. I'm not going to give him a gold star, though. Um, Derek Corrigan's displaced ma massive amounts of people, um, building a whole bunch of um, luxury towers um, in Burnaby. And... <laughs> Gregor's done nothing around homelessness in the however many years, he, 10 years he's been where he is. So uh, it's all pipeline politics. It's all putting people in poverty and keeping people in poverty and keeping people there, um, which inevitably leads often to, to prison and incarceration and police brutality as well. So there's all these pipelines in all of these places. Um, yeah, saying one thing and doing another or 
for a long time, people weren't even saying the one thing um, that they were doing the opposite for. So what needs to be won? Um, we need to win rent control that's tied to a unit and not to um, the tenant. We need better evictions protections. We need more um, pension and welfare rate social housing. Uh, we need less discrimination in housing policies. Uh, we need a better residential tenancy branch. We need to raise the welfare rates and, and um, PWD. Um, at raise the rates, we say $1,600 a month because that's where the poverty line is at. Um, but anything more than $100 would be great at this point. Uh, we need to tax the rich. We need more progressive income taxes. Uh, we need to end a lot of the really, really punitive measures on income assistance. Um, we need to end a lot of the really punitive measures for um, kids in, in care, in foster care, um, and, and through MCFD, and the fact that you, Indigenous grandparents can be raising their grandchildren um, on less than what a white foster family will get, and that's fucked. Um, we need to end capitalism. We need leaders who are more reflective of the people. Uh, we need a system that is more reflective of what um, the people need. We need justice-oriented solutions. We don't need more charity. Um, we don't need more um, billion, like, okay, I won't say anything about the YWCA, but anyways, the, the lot, the, you know, like million dollar sort of charitable structures that are implanted there that everyone is creating this sort of system of dependence, that needs to go. Um, we need to give land back. And I think that's, that's um, a lot of what, where decolonization comes down to. It's literally, it's not a metaphor. Um, and that's from, that's a line, that's a title of an article um, by Eve Tuck and um, an author named Wang Yang, I think. I don't remember her, her whole name. Um, that like changed my entire life when I read it a while ago uh, in school. Anyways. Um, that's what it comes down to. That's also the framework that I think we need our struggles to, to change. So um, before coming here, um, I am a part of the Vancouver Tenants Union, which we got started about a year ago, and we're kind of, uh, I don't know, we're sort of trying to, to, to pull together on a lot of solutions um, for a lot of things to do with housing. Um, and using the tenant sort of as a front line for people, uh, tenant being fairly like widely defined, of course. Um, so how do we link different struggles? The LA Tenants Union, who we're pretty connected to um, down in the States, we've, we've gotten to know a lot of incredible um, housing groups uh, all across the States and all across Canada and North America um, who are uh, grounded in, in um, working class communities of color, so they really know what they're talking about. Um, but the LA Tenants Union um, has, this, uh, has this really widely inclusive definition of tenant, which is um, one of the main points about it is that you're not uh, in control of your housing. So whether you're homeless or whether you're unstably housed or couch surfing or renting or whatever, you're not in control of it, you don't own it. Um, but they said a really incredible thing when they came up to visit us in November and by came out to visit, we brought them over. Um, and they said that uh, they're not a housing group. They're not about housing issues, which are like, wait, what? They're about tenant issues and tenants' issues. So if a tenant issue is that sex work is criminalized, if a tenant issue is that you don't get enough on income assistance, if a tenant issue is that um, you know, you're laboring away at minimum wage, um, then, then that's issues that the LATU is therefore gonna be thinking about and working on. Um, and I think that idea of redefining your framework of how you understand who you're working for um, and what you're working towards is really important. So we, we came up with those thoughts together um, in some of the steering committee of the Tenants Union. I think how can we reframe our struggles so that it's like pretty dependent on each other? Um, because a lot of times um, how it feels is you have the, the really large environmental NGOs who seem to be able to pull a really huge crowd out, um, which are often not the same as indigenous land defenders and land protectors, and it's taken the environmental movement a long time to, to finally align, and it seems like maybe now uh, they're kind of doing that with the watch house and the support behind it, but anyways, 
um, <clears throat> it seems generally like the that sort of mainstream environmental movement um, who can like really spin a lot of sexy issues to to like the nimbies of the environment, the not in my backyards of the environmental movement, which is funny because we have those in the housing movement, but we don't like them. Um, actually, the whole phrase of like my backyard is also really uh, needs to be like unpacked quite a bit when you're thinking about whose backyard though? When did you get here? You're probably a settler. Um, anyway, so it's it's thinking about how we can frame our struggles to be connected to each other um, and to and to better show up for each other, which I know everyone is tired and exhausted and they, they can't get their feet on the ground for a protest to raise welfare rates or raise minimum wage or support a fight for 15 or, or any various other things, but they really have to. Um, if we were to have a framework of understanding struggle to connect it, um, that's not something that um, looks towards the market for solutions and isn't a capitalist sort of understanding and a neoliberal and very individual understanding of solutions to the problems we're in. Um, that framework should be decolonization. Um, it should be like starting there for everything that we do. And so we're sort of trying at the VTU to think about how we can do that, and how do you how do you bring people into a movement when they're on sort of the front line of, of losing their shelter and losing their housing and losing their you know everything, um, knowing one that people have already lost that in the last 500 years, um, and and two that we need to work harder at that. Um, my partner is a really brilliant poet, and they have a line in one of their poems on cultural appropriation. Uh, which a lot of people try this appreciation, whatever, and they say, I don't want your appreciation, I want my land back. Um, so I don't want your lift service, like, I want the land to go back to where it is. I want a movement for justice. Um, so how do we link them is understanding that, it, at least here, it's uh, all unceded territory. Um, and even in places where it is treated, its treaties often entered into bad faith on behalf of the Canadian state. So how, how surrendered can you really say it ever is? Um, I think we need to think also in terms of, you know, sort of social justice movements and, and oriented movements and things like that. How do you cut through a lot of the reactionary defenses that people have um, to issues that you're talking about? How do you say, what are you angry about? Um, and working down from that and understanding that. Um, when we were in conversation about uh, who was gonna speak on this and, and what we were gonna speak about, we said, well, yeah, how do we link different struggles? How do we bring movements together? There's like two things that people said. We said, stop being an asshole. Um, <laughs> and the other one was listening and putting, setting your ego aside. I think th those two sort of pieces um, would help a lot in being able to bring us together to really listen to what people are saying, but also to make sure we're uplifting the people that um, need to be listened to most and, and are leading from their experiences and their lived experiences, um, which is a lot of what a lot of the learning that I've done um, working for like an, in housing justice issues and, and um, working on sort of anti-poverty issues as well as somebody who hasn't um, ever been on welfare, um, is listening to the people who know best and then you, you build up. You don't, it, we all know, we all know, trickle down doesn't, it doesn't trickle down, you can't do that. Um, I think that maybe might be where I'll end it. Stop being an asshole. Um, but I don't know who it, I don't know if it's necessarily the people like in this room who need to hear that message. I think there are a few others, um, like the Canadian Senate. Apparently they just, they just put forward a motion that uh, Trudeau's support does everything in his power to make this pipeline happen. Like, what are you doing? Um, who, what, anyways, I don't know if I'm supposed to be swearing either, so I should also <laughs> refrain from that. Um, I will also say there's, there's another, um, in, in terms of how do we bring our, our struggles together and, and, and how do we think about a framework that can incorporate that um, is, 
sometimes people like sometimes there's this difference between organizing and mobilizing um, mobilizing being the mass movements and mass numbers of people we can bring out to things um, which is incredibly important um, for keeping um, politicians accountable and keeping um, you know eyes and, and attention on the story um, and at the same time organizing um, needs to happen which is like deeper relationship building with people you want to bring into a movement so you know maybe if you don't agree on everything you know that your principles are are similar and your your strategies and your tactics can change and can be different but if you come down to the same sort of principles and same um, like a shared understanding of what you're working on um, that's really important so so juggling that as well um, oftentimes there's there's this sense of crisis and it is a crisis and there are so many crises that we're facing right now um, not the smallest of which is like you know kind of climate change is like constantly looming which like a lot of activists are like it's constantly looming um, and you know it's not gonna you're not gonna win it we know we're not gonna win higher welfare rates yet <laughs> we're trying 10 years um, many 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 years for many people um, but how do we build an infrastructure that people can rely on in, in a movement? Um, how do we bring people on um, and then let them come to see that the world we want is, looks radically different from the one where we are? I think I'm actually asking more questions than giving any answers. Um, but that's also probably part of the process, um, is you, you have to ask um, more questions than, um, than have all the answers kind of in that conversation that that happens. Um, I'm all for people's plans for um, solving things. Um, there was a really great group from the States um, that was working with us when we were in Morocco and they created this big people's plan to, um, for climate change and dealing with climate change in the States because they knew with the new administration, they knew with any administration it wasn't gonna happen, but um, they know that that's where it comes from, is that it comes from the grassroots and it comes from um, the people most on the ground. So I'll probably leave it at that. I do hope that the conversation can become interactive as well, because if we're going to be talking and strategizing informally, one, it feels weird to do that on a panel, and two, I think there need to be like an, ex an exchange of ideas and things. And so I, that's what I would wish for um, to come out of this always, is, is more of an yeah, strategizing informally together. Yeah. So thanks.